Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to Divinity Original Sin 2 on the Xbox Series X. This game did have some screen tearing issues when I played it on the One X, so I'm hoping that they might be tidied up with this. I'm also hoping it might have an uncapped frame rate maybe, so we can get 60, I don't know, 60 FPS maybe, let's crack it. Might be capped at 30, but hopefully screen tearing will be sorted out. So we're going to do a new story. And we're going to do a single player. Uh, I need to remember what all these are now. Classic mode seems to be the default. A classic role-playing experience. You are cunning, resourceful, and prepared for the perils that await. Well, that sounds a little bit like somebody else. <laughs> I mean me. Got to have your brain on to play these games, people. Didn't hold your hand too much. Beautiful, beautiful games, though. Ooh. Right, what are we going to be? Well, that's the Red Prince. Sabil. All right, you can actually listen to the origin story, right? Okay. Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. Nice. I love that touch. That's brilliant. I don't remember that from playing it the first time. So, well, I say played it for the first time. I, I barely scratched the surface of it. I, I did a fair bit, but, you know, there was still plenty to do. How many options is a Sabeel, Ifan Ben Mezd, Beast, Loser, Bane, Dwarf, Elf, Human... Lizard, Undead Dwarf, Undead Elf, Undead Human, Undead Lizard, and the Red Prince again. Nice. I'm not sure if you can pick... Well, no. The characters seem to be set in their gender. So I couldn't pick Human and then change to a female. Like the same with the Dwarf. It doesn't seem to be a an option for that. She looks like a mage, yeah. Corpse Eater, Ancestral Knowledge. I can't remember what I went last time. Sophisticated Spell Song. He's a mage. Why have they all got mage staffs? Is it me being silly? There we go. <laughs> so you go down to the bottom, you can be whatever you want and, and change them to whatever you want to be. So... I think I must have gone my usual bow sort of person, surely, last time. Yeah, I went ranger, I think. Rogue. Shadow Blade. God, there's so many options, it's ridiculous. Wayfarer gets a crossbow. Nice. The Witch. The Wizard. The Battle Mage. You must be able to change them to... No, so they're set, set names though, aren't they? Battle Mage. 
All right, Battle Mage gets a couple of axes and probably spells as well, by the looks of it. I wonder if that's worth a crack. Talents. It's quite good, that, isn't it? Pick any character, change them to whatever you, whatever class you want to go with. Ooh, Cleric looks nice as well, doesn't it? <laughs> Two-handed hammer. Oh, two-handed sword. Check that beast out. Right, anyway, I'm going to go with my usual. I'm going to go with Rogue, just because it's what I'm used to. I'll figure it out quicker. So this is Lusa. I think Losa was a companion last time. Sure she was. Unless it was me and I'm just forgetting. Ah, uh, yeah. I think I went that last time. I went the elf. That's exactly what I went. It was a bit cheeky, isn't it? That little outfit. Cheeky. <laughs> uh, so I think I won't go for the same guy again. I think we'll go with... I could go Losa, to be fair. Go La Femme. La Fembo. Or the Sabile, yeah. It's a very tall lady. I think she's an elf, isn't she? Yeah, elf. Let's see what her story is. I used to be a slave. Kept under the thumb of the master. The bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles. And when I finally find him, I will make the master sing a very different kind of song. Nice, like her. Attitude. Alright, let's see what Losa's story is to compare. And then we'll to make a choice then, people. All my life I've been a performer. A musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. <laughs> Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. All right. This under control. Dark side. Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Nice. She's got a bit of a dark side to her then. Fane, I remember him from the game as well. Right, I'm going to go with the Sibyl. I like Sibyl's attitude. She's got me hooked in. Let's do it. And Corpse Eater and Ancestral Knowledge for her perks. I guess we'll figure out what they do. I think Corpse Eater possibly gets health from corpses. I don't know. Anyway, let's crack in. All right, how do we pick it? Origin, appearance. Oh, blimey. I can actually change. All right, you can actually change the way they look. And the voices and stuff. You can obviously skip past all of this, people. You don't have to sit and watch it, but I'm going to take my time with it because it's actually one of the few games that's got a really interesting men <laughs> configuration menu at the beginning. And I didn't know that about viewing the Origins either, or I'd forgotten at least.
Can't actually remember what was on now. Was it phase seven we started with? Yeah, I might go with that face, actually. That looks a bit harsh, that one. What does the right clicking the right one do? Ah, it turns the helmet on and off. Nice. Oh, hello. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. Hairstyle. We started on eight. Oh, nice. That's quite smart, isn't it? Skin colour, wheat. Sable. Shell. Earth. Oh, you can zoom in on them. He just realises. I'll stick with wheat, I think. Nutmeg, June. We'll run through them just so you can see them all. Walnut. Shale, turf. Caramel. Cocoa, Ebony, and Ivory, Knight, Filigan, oh Alabaster's quite good isn't it? Seems to have gone past Wheat, where did Wheat go? Oh there it is. Wheat or alabaster, isn't it, really? Go with wheat. Stick with it. Hair colour, crow. Gecko. Peacock. Ice bear. Rabbit. Fawn. Canary. Dormouse. Eagle. Bear. Elk. Coyote. Sparrow. Fox. Fox is quite good, isn't it? Bit of the ginger going on. Coxcomb, beg your pardon. Yeah, I think I quite like Fox. We'll go with Fox. Right. Look good on that front. Presets. We've got attribute. Right, okay. Finesse and wits we seem to have there. Spending points on combat abilities generally increases the damage you do in the skill schools you invest in. However, there are other benefits as well. Read the descriptions of the skill schools to fully understand what the invested points do. So... Oh, I see. It's just letting us take them away. think hang on so I think it's letting me change my presets here she's got lucky charm huntsman pyro pyrokinetic finesse and wits so if I take one away from there yeah it's letting me change them determines finesse based damage you deal finesse being Finesse increases your damage with finesse-based weapons and skills. Currently, finesse-based attacks and skills you do 10% plus 10% extra damage. Plus 1 point equals plus 5% damage. So, finesse weapon is going to be a bow, I'm assuming, which is why I've got it. And wits affect your critical chance initiative and your ability to detect traps and find hidden treasure. Okay. Magic damage, influence the amount of character's vitality, determines the number of skills a character can remember at once. Yeah, okay. Huntsman is correct, that's what we want. Pyrokinetic though, I'm not sure I want that. Pyrokinetic increases all fire da damage you deal. So we could in fact take that off and put two on Huntsman, effectively. Or... Hmm, there's one that does healing, isn't there? Which would be very useful to start with. 
Hydrophysist, I think it is. Hydrophysist increases all water damage you deal and any vitality healing or magic armor armor restoration that you can co that you cause. Next level is one. I think I'm going to go for that because I'm, I'm pretty sure hydrophysist or hydro yeah hydrosophist <laughs> hydrosophist hydro uh, however you pronounce it is uh, for healing. So when we buy a healing spell, we can put it on straight away. Civil abilities are non-combat abilities. They come in handy when you are not solving a situation through conflict. So Lucky Charm increases your likelihood of finding extra treasure wherever it is stashed. Which isn't a bad thing. Lawmaster identifies enemies and allows you to identify items. Increasing Lawmaster allows you to identify more faster. To identify, use the identifying glass. Yeah, that's actually very handy, that thing. At least someone on your team needs to have it. Yeah, picking locks was the one I was going to go for there. But we can get someone on our team that does it. I think we'll go with Lawmaster and Lucky Charm. Keep them as they are. Move objects. Yeah. It's handy as well. They're all handy. Mind you, you can get stuff identified by somebody else. Oh, just let me actually it's not letting me take it's not letting me change that one. I can change the lucky charm one, but I can't change the lawmaster one. And skills are elemental arrows, ricochet, yeah. Hail strike, restoration, there we go. Restore vitality of a target character. Restoration also cures poison and bleeding. Yeah, we'll take that, I think. Elemental arrowheads. Target a surface in melee radius. Elemental damage matching that surface is added to range of weapon attack. Yeah, I think I'll take that off and I might have pinned down instead. First aid's pretty handy as well. Because I remember pinned down being very handy. Keep someone stuck there while you get a couple of moves on them. We'll get them all eventually, of course. Marvellous. A arrow recovery. 33% chance to recover special arrow after shooting it. Ambidextrous reduces the cost of using grenades and scrolls by 1 AP. Combat Kid. Once per combat, if any enemy lands a fatal blow, Combat Kid will help you bounce back to life with 20% health. If you die and res are resurrected in combat, Combat Kid will be available again. Evade. Elemental Affinity lowers action points, cost of spells. Or Ranger. Shooting arrows with will inflict bonus elemental damage depending on the surface you target. Flee combat. Range of skills is increased. Far out man increases the range of skills and scrolls by two meters. Does not affect melee and touch range skills. Okay, there's loads here. I, could, I mean, I can't go through them all at the minute. We'll be here all night, people, if we haven't been already. Lone Wolf provides plus two max AP, plus two recovery AP, plus 30% vitality, plus 60% physical armor, plus 60% magic armor, and doubles invested points and attributes, up to a maximum of 40, and combat abilities, except Polymorph. While you are adventuring solo or with one of the companion, yeah, okay. So it's only good for that particular circumstance. Okay. No.
Back alleys and rooftops know well the tread of your boot. You've got friends in low places and enemies to match. Intelligent and curious. I'll just keep that as it is, I think. I don't think we can change it anyway, looking at it. Instruments. What? Yeah, we'll stick with the flute, I think. Right, I think we're good. How do we start the game? I'd planned. I was shackled and collared and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill God Woken, but instead I became part of their story. Here we go. So, still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Really? Oh yeah, we start with that thing around our neck, don't we? What a dismal way to wake in the belly of the beast. Let's see if I can grope my way out. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, you can zoom in, can't you? Yeah, she's come out alright, isn't she? She looks quite good. Can I pan around your scam? Okay, so so far, just looking at that panning... I think we're probably locked at 30, but that's fine. For a game like this, it's okay. Uh, hopefully it'll have got rid of the tearing, though. But that happened in the open world, if I remember rightly. Grinning skull. Ugh, bones are so boring. Without flesh, there's no memories to be had. Nothing of any use at the moment. Under lock and key. I think it's just a case of going out. I'm not sure I'll find anything in it. Oh. Did she not come up this way, that woman? I thought she did. Get out of here. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I have to put it down at some point, it'd be weighing me down that. How 
utterly charming. Most of the time, keys to locked doors and chests are hidden. Look around to see if you can find the key to this door. Did you expect a needle? What? Did you expect a needle? Oh, I see. Needle in a haystack. Ha <laughs> ha. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay, why does she keep picking stuff up? I'm hitting the wrong buttons, clearly. Locked. <laughs> yeah, it took me about three years to kick my way through that. Yeah, so that's where we're meant to be going, I think, up the ladder. But it does seem to be suggesting there's a hidden key down, isn't it? Did you expect a needle? Couple of eggs though. Some form of health, I think. Lovely. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Cargo door key. Have a bit of that action, people. Who is clever? I think you'll find I am. Thank you. Active search. To easily pick up many objects around you, hold A to create an active search area. Okay. Nice. Nice. Healing potion. Well, that's going to take us to a prisoner and stuff out here, I think. I just want to check out this other room before I go down that way in case something kicks off. Has to be some way of... Hang on. Some way of getting rid of that. Now, that's my hot bar. Oh, can I not get to my inventory yet? Is that what that's all about? Because I picked up a ruddy great crate. Could do with getting rid of it. Ah, oh, ready? <laughs> Thought the same key was going to open that door. Never ye mind. This door is operated by pressure plates. Stand on them or place heavy objects on them. Gotcha. Need something else. Is that going to be heavy enough? Ha 
Nice. Stevie's on fire. Oh, talking about fire, that's bloody oil. It's not going to end well if we get caught in that. Oh, hello. Oh, it's slowed me down as well. Come here. Oh, guard's sleeping. Shit. Quietly does it, Stephen. What's up, dude? Hey. Hey. Hemwar. This cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Agree to help and ask what to do. Turn your back. There's no way you're getting involved. Eye him carefully. Why is he in the cage in the first place? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. Demand to know what he's in there for. Set me free and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. Oh yeah, what does that mean? You're gonna kill me. A gentlewoman among jesters, you are. Give that lever a pull, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. Yeah, he sounds iffy, doesn't he? Actually, I'm not a save yet. Let's have a save. Before you can even touch the lever, you hear a sniff and snort behind you as the snoring magister mumbles himself awake. One bloodshot eye opens, and then another. Oh, Is my shift over? Are you here to relieve me? Yep. Oh, wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy elf? Choose your words carefully. My fists ache to meet a new face. Ignore the guard and make a move towards the nearby lever. Tell the truth, you're snooping around. What's he going to do about it? Wits persuasion. Salute him and say his superior sent you. He's to report to the upper deck. Constitution persuasion. Doesn't seem to tell us what the chances of success are. Tell him you heard yelling coming from above. He needs to get up there. Laugh and tell him one of the guards on the upper deck fell overboard. He should check it out. I think I've got finesse, haven't I? We'll try the finesse one. Nice. Persuasion succeeded. <laughs> Those idiots can't even walk straight without mucking it up. <laughs> was it Ricks? <laughs> I bet it was Ricks. <laughs> Who's a Renart? Can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. Yeah. Uh. Memory persuasion. Speak boastfully of your days as a prison warden. The guard can go ahead. You've got this. Hmm. I don't have intelligence or strength, I don't think, in that regard. Should we go for the memory? Failed. Needed to. If it's all the same, I think it's best he comes with me. Some offence intended. You hear that, Emoir? We're taking a walk. Right, don't know if I could have succeeded in that at all or not. Oh well, <laughs> failed. It's possible it's not. It's possible I'm not able to do it. But oh hello, what the fuck? Oh, is he attacking me as well? God's sake! I can't actually do anything. I don't think. I don't have any weapons or anything. Can punch him. Oh, 
<laughs> well, he's dead. Yeah, he's doing better than I am, I think. Oh, hang on a minute. What's that there? Oh, that's Resurrection Scroll. Yeah, it's just punching I've got. And healing. I can heal myself, I think. Maybe not. Might actually be doing better than him a little bit. It's pretty even, though, isn't it? Oh, nice. Dodged it. <laughs> the longest fist fight in history. I didn't do this last time I played. I didn't even know I could get in here last time. God damn it. It's the first time he's dodged. One more will do it. I'll oh, give over. He's taking the piss now, the length of this fight. That'll do. All that for 15 gold, for God's sakes. I have a sneaky suspicion that he would have attacked us either way, really. Oh, I was, I was just about to say, just lying on a mattress, heal you, and look at that. Electric discharge scroll this, please. You found the electric discharge scroll. Try it out on a puddle of water or steam uh, or a steam cloud and see what happens. Electrify, one guesses. Bit of a crappy angle on that. Well, that's not painful. Locked. Can't can't unlock it from this side either. Guard might have had the key though, right enough. All right. Empty. 
healing potion. Thank you. Well, that's poison shiz, isn't it? That. Which, at the moment, I can't do anything about, can I? Oh, igniting poison. Move a candle onto the poison. Ah, right. I did not know I could move candles. Right, hang on a sec. Sweet. One way to open the door, people. I need to wait for it to cool down now, though, because I can't get out. I can go that way, I suppose. No key. Well, no, no problem. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. More healing. That'll come in handy. Well, I don't think I got any of that stuff the last time I played this game. Deck of cards. Rubbish. <laughs> right. Was that to suggest that I shouldn't be picking it up or what? Nice. That's how you get in. And I'm back where I started. <sighs> Nowhere to go but up. Yep. Nice. Now she's telling me where to go. Quick save. Let's do it. Three new journal entries. You've discovered two cro new chronicles. You've added two chronicles. <laughs> I really need to stop doing that. Small tome. This is the way to do it. See what's useful and what's not. Right, let's get on with it. Don't think there's anything in here for us. Why you're looking a bit more chipper? Yes, looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. It's not very nice, is it? In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. No known associates. They practice... You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Rightio. Mentioned there was a little accident in the cargo deck. The prisoner's dead. <laughs> Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? Lean in and whisper that the Magister below deck suffered a fatal encounter. Probably not as quite a, rough, a good idea. You pull at the thing around your neck fut futilely. Demand to know why she's collared you. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. You recall the power building inside you, the breaking of your shackles, the fury setting you free. Unleash it. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts. 
makes you unable to cast Source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Scholar, muse that the room's shape. You can tell you're on a Lucian class frigate, but why? Why? Because we're at sea, of course, and have been for several days. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. I bet there's not much joy there. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Lean in and whisper that the Magister below deck suffered a fatal encounter. She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare, but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. <laughs> Wait till you go downstairs. Did the murderer take him into this room? Or was he already here? <laughs> Good gods, there's... there's been a murder here. A young Magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Avoid looking into the room. Between the lurching ship and the smell of blood, you feel sick. Peer into the room and ask what happened. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. A murder? Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Ask if you could lend a hand in the investigation. Aren't you enterprising? I'll let Waters tell you now herself. Go ahead. She with the body. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Inform her that she wasn't this man's protector, she was his captor. Ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene. For all she knows, you could be the killer. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Well, magics. Shrug and say maybe you can. You are a sorcerer after all. Not with that collar on you, aren't? <laughs> She's got an answer for everything, hasn't she? Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? One coin. Nod and say you'll let her know if you hear anything interesting. Say that you're no snitch. Laugh. She really thinks you'd help a magister, someone who's keeping her under lock and key. Tell her your price is considerably higher than that. I'm no snitch. An elf of principle. I get it. Wonder how you'll feel when whoever did this does it again. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. All right. We'll see. That goes up to the main deck, I think. Let's just check this back room. Yeah, I think that goes up to the main deck of the ship, actually, now I think about it. Money inside. 
What was that? Kind of got a... Uh, actually, bed rolls. Yes, take that. You can camp. You can rest. Yeah, you can rest wherever you like and get your healing back. Get your health back. Yarp. Victor. Busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sub story somewhere else. Iphen Ben Meds. Is he not one of the people we could have been? A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face. He stares across at the magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp Ifan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? They never have names that are easy to spell. Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. Ask Ifan why the magister suspects him of murder. This doesn't seem like the optimal part of the ship to hang around. No. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. <laughs> Johnny Big Pants. Ask Ifan what he did to find himself at the mercy of the subordinate. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. Say that you're curious about the murder. Did he do it? No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. Ask your fan if he knows anything about where you're headed. The joy. Fort Joy. A lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Say you'd like to meet Alexander, you'd show exactly what you think of his bloody divine order. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You, Elf, what's your name? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name. Say that it's uh, Lenta. <laughs> Refuse to give him your name. Tell him your name is Sebil. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. It's locked. I better not annoy him. Beast. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, girl. You hear that? Girl? Tell him you ought to think twice before addressing you like a child. He turns his head toward you, looking you up 
and down, and smiles before turning his attention to the ship once more. You look like a girl to me. Listen if you're interested, or get gone if you aren't. Ask what you're meant to be hearing. A ship, of course. Quieten and listen to the sounds of the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Tell him the ship is moaning like a sick man. Say the sea sounds angry, like it's trying to capsize the ship. Remark that your shipmates are as chatty as gulls. You can barely hear over the din. Eh. A common sort of sound, isn't it? Where there's talk, there's health. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. Close your eyes and try to let the ambient sound of the ship fade away. There now, just like that. Squeak! Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There! You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, Gero. Good news. Ask what's got him so excited. That was nothing more than a rat. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been travelling for... Yes! Only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Tell him he shouldn't talk like that about such magnificent, about such a magnificent beard. Ask why he's so excited about reaching Fort Joy. Yeah, no, indeed, Gero. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, Gero. Right, you are. Cock an eyebrow if he's hatching an escape plan you want in. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. <laughs> right, it's like that, is it? So these are basically all the characters we could have picked at the beginning. Did you see the body? They ought to let you taste a bit. Maybe you'd find out who done it. She's a really good singer. I'm better though. Listen. La 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 la. Well, that was awesome, that was. <laughs> well done. Hello, sir. Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Wife. Wife? Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Play along and take her arm with a grin. Tell the children they must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and get, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Say that's true enough. Shake a hand. Losa, you, Losa, you presume? You presume right. Ask if she knows anything about the murder of what happened on board. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. <laughs> the utterer, the better. Tell her she ought to have a look around with you. You can watch each other's backs. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Rightio. Well, I think that's it. I think if I think we can trigger. We didn't get any news for the mage, though, did we? About the murder. One of us will kill our own. 
Oh, hang on, we've still got people over here. Can we just... Namia. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. And the Red Prince. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Humor him. Let's see where it leads. Hmm. There's some discolorations. I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Nod, tell him you're quite the wizard in the kitchen, a true chef. Laugh and say you can hardly tell a turkey from a turnip. Tell him you're not answering his damn questions, don't you leave. Think I'll nod and tell him I'm quite the wizard in the kitchen. Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short, uh, tailor? Most certainly tell him, given a sheet of satin, you can make a bum look like a baron. <laughs> what? <laughs> tell him you're handy with a needle, but probably not in the way that he imagines. Yes, well, I'll count that as a no, shall I? <laughs> yes, I think so. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Say you most certainly have personal pride. You're no stranger to a comb, to combs, powders, or perfumes. Rubbing your chin, tell him you're trying to recall the last time you bathed. <laughs> what month is this? You tire of his game, yeah. Say you most certainly have personal pride. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook and groom. But you have the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit. You got it. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. You're over the moon. Tell him you accept. Stare him blankly. He thinks you're some... He thinks you're his some... What? He thinks... I can't read people. Stare at him blankly. <laughs> he thinks you're his what now? That makes some sort of, yeah, that makes sense now. Tell him you've had a mind of to punch him in the face. And then there's a Sybil option, which is ours. Sybil, smirk and say he's a dead man. I'll have you know that threatening one's master is punishable by death. Rein in your impertinence, will you? I'm a fair man, but I won't spare the rod. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoot. Yes. I think there's only one character left, and it's the character I went as last time. Bane. Elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and examines your face, tugging at your ears and prodding your nose. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book. Flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Stare at him in shock and ask what the hell he thinks he's doing. <laughs> ask whether the book he's reading is any good. He seems engrossed in it. Ask who you're speaking to. Have a Sabeel option. Tell him that unsolicited fingers have a remarkable tendency to break. I am not as brittle as all that, young lady. My fingers will hardly... Although perhaps you mean... Oh, oh dear, I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, fellow elf. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Look at him curiously. You're not sure he understands what's happening. 
You're bemused. Who is this guy? Ask about his book. It really seems to have drawn him in. I do not believe I've been drawn anywhere. It is a quaint little read, but it has its faults. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Say that history differs from one memory to the next. It's as much in flux as the present as the future, and the in flux as the present and the future. Most unusual, and if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. Yep. No, I want to know about the celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Admit that some things just aren't known. Look at him incredulously. The gods are forces of nature. They don't have a history. Ask why he's so curious about the gods. Snort. If he wants legends, he shouldn't read. He should be reading history books. Hey. Admit that some things are just aren't known. Ask why he's so curious. Else face freezes for just a second before he waves his hand dismissively. Oh, it's just one of my idle curiosities. We mortals do like to consider these things, do we not? Now please run along. I have a world to decipher. Insist why he was so curious about the gods. No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Fair enough. Oh, that's locked. Right, let's try going upstairs. I think we'll get a fight when we go up here. Not that we can do much at the minute with our bloody collar on. I think we keep it on for ages, though, at the minute. Ah, the hatch is blocked. I'll need to find another way. Maybe not, then. Maybe we have to speak to the murderer investigator first. So, anything interesting for me? Ask her to define interesting. Tell her you're still looking around. Right. Tick tock. You've been collared and you've been told why. There really is no need for you to linger. All right, okay. Well, I can't go anywhere else, my love. That I mean? That light. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like wolves around a campfire. Didn't talk to this guy right enough. Well, Paid. Here's the register, ma. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Tell him you're fine. Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Keep those bumps trying on her. And if she tries. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. This may be the perfect opportunity to create a mutiny. Tell the woman you stand by her. Address the sorcerer and ask her what she meant by these are others who live, whose lives must end. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. 
Subdue her man quickly. If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. Yeah, that's where the big fight is, Void Woken. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Bite! <laughs> that went well, I, th I felt, you know. What's, what's happened? 400 XP, nice. Woo -woo. Good grief, that blew up. I think we have to go wandering about this bottom deck now to try and get our crew or pick up some of the other folks. Beast. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. Hold your head to his chest, listen for heartbeat. Call to him. Is he all right? What? The Red Prince. What happened? That must have been the turnips. Grab a nearby cup and throw some water in his face. Water? What? The lizard's eyes closed. <laughs> into unconsciousness. Oh, for God's sake! Well, that didn't help, did it? Who else is kicking around? What was that? Source... Source Hound. Oh, right. Meat. Oh, makeshift club. Nice. Not that it's much use to us as a bow person, but you know. The young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but her eyes are wide open, like those of a corpse. Dark, greyish black clouds swirl through them. Call out to her, wake up. She doesn't stir. Ah. Yes, I forgot about all the... Ah, here we go. I knew the inventory was somewhere. There you go. We've got a, At least we've got a club now. Fighting with. It's better than no... Well, it's better than our fists. What happened to the elf guy? Ifan. Ifan was a bit of a beast, from remember rightly. Ifan lies motionless, curled on the ground like an animal. Under his shaggy hair, you can see green eyes fluttering as if in a nightmare. A low whine escapes his lips. Shake him to try and wake him. His eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucian. Lucian. Ifan cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. Right, well, we can't wake anybody up. There's a couple of folk that I've not come across yet. No. I 
broken source collar. Oh, hello. Getting armed. We've got a bow, people. And a shield, by the looks of it. Twig with a string. <laughs> Sounds like a ripper. Can we can we actually equip it? Yep. Hundred gold, what? Improvised wand. And this should protect you from stray blows and arrows. That is if you know how to wield it. Nice. Well, you see, it's worth taking this game slowly, people. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> Help. I want to stop being on fire. Water. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, that's how it works in this game. Elements affect each other, so... <laughs> the question now is, before we go upstairs into the big fight... Oh, hello. Yeah, I know what. I know, I know. That's it. Rest outside of battle. Heal yourself. Right, well, I don't think there's anyone else to talk to. I'm going to try going up above. High up above and down below. Ink pot and quill. Did we go in there? Oh, it's locked. It did say that keys to locked doors were usually in the surrounding area, but I didn't come across anywhere in here that had anything like a key. There's a book in there as well. I think it's a skill book. It's well worth finding the key. Nothing else in here, though, is Right, I'm sure when I played this last time, somebody told me where that key was. I'm never going to remember. It could be on the guard on the other side of the door, of course, on the other, the other side. Skill books are pretty useful, people. That's why we're after it. Really? Just picked up a water barrel, for God's sake. Well, that's a good point, to be fair, because... I think you'll find that we've got stupid things in here. Yeah, that, for a start off. Damn it. Thought he was going to have the key. Oh, 
I knew I should have done damn lock picking. Might have to live without it, people. Nah, they've got me flummoxed on that one. I don't know. I think we're just going to have to head upstairs. It's annoying, though, because the skill books are, you know, the rarities. You want to be picking them up when you can get them. Well, when you can get them for free. There's nothing else, though, is there? There's literally nowhere else. Right, well, before I bore you all to tears any more than is necessary, I'll have to go upstairs. <laughs> Christ's sake. I thought this was going to take us onto the main deck. Oh, there's a dog in there. I'll say, ah, oh, he looks really angry. God damn it. I need to get off this wreck and quick. If I remember rightly, you get good money for paintings. That doesn't bode well. Onwards and upwards. Also locked. There's guards in there, the looks of it. Just a swordsman. Not long before this thing snaps into splinters. Great gods, something's pounding on the hull. Yeah, that's basically telling us to get out there. The marking on the door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You recognize the symbol immediately for what it is a warning of death fog within. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply grey. The colour drains from your hand, and you are left numb. Pull open the door. Another bow. My first bow. Uh, really? Nice! Had a feeling that would work. Ooh, skull mark key. The enigmatic key is stamped with a white skull, the Magister symbol for death fog. Death fog barrels have been locked down in storage. Stay out. You and Rick's both. If anyone starts fooling around down there, it'll be lights out. Fane! You pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular, and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? There's something familiar about the way he holds the book. Grab whatever is close at hand and move to attack now. Ask if he shouldn't be doing the same. 
something familiar. The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. Yes, indeed. It's the look of someone that wants to read the bloody book he's holding. Now, if you're really quite finished, I believe you have lifeboats to flee to. That's it, he's the elf. He's the elf that was reading the book. Please, I was no more an elf than you are those rags you're wearing. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. That's heartless. He could be saving people right now. Nod, that seems sensible. You don't have time for this. Take your leave. That's heartless. Holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving. And I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on. Go. Swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book to read. Well, that was worthwhile. Oh, it's the dog. Okay. <laughs> it's a long conversation. It's the lockhead. Oh, massive chest. Rain scroll. Short stick healing. Right, just let me see if this key opens this door. I think it won't. I think it'll be for the one upstairs, but still. No. God damn it. God damn it, that's annoying. Super fast changing levels though, isn't it? I open that. Your belly goes hollow and your skin goes pale. Use the key. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. Holy hell. I need to get out of here. Now. Oh, really? I swear in God's name I'm meant to be going then. The stairs there go down. There's no door though. Well, I'm going to assume I'm not allowed to go through that stuff, so I can only assume that we need to go up here and this other way. Oh, easy. Fuck. God damn it. Yeah, well, just did a game save there, so I'm assuming it's going to be up to the top deck now. Bite! Right, uh, just use our bow for the first part, I think, see what happens. Nice. Ow. He's poisoned. Ah, sod it. Just hit them. Ow. Ow. 
Need to heal. Octopus! I'm pretty sure I need to go back down and save people because I'm sure I remember... Oh, yeah, I know. You bump into somebody. That's what it is. There's somebody up here and they say, let's get out of here. And you say, no, I'm going back or just go with them sort of thing. Holy shit. Oh, it's gone out now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, really, that slow stuff winds me right up. Binding Radiant Scroll. He's nowhere. I'm sure he's near a lifeboat or something. A lifeboat. Ah, here we go. Chuck it, crack it. Children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. You said there were other people down there. We, we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Call the dwarf a yellow bellied coward. You'll return to the lower deck and check for survivors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a ladder right over there. You can go straight down. You're going to be the death of us here. That's Magister Swear uh, Siwan. Oh, hello. Wait. Void woken. Got a team now, though. Beardless bug would sink the ship on my watch. I thought Void woken was supposed to be scary. I've faced worse. All right, gang up on me, why don't you? They who are about to try on us. Careful with that fire now. Seriously, what's going on with... Take one of them. No armour, to be fair. Is it dead? Come on, team. I'll give you 
nice. Sure, if that's everybody or not. It's Magister Siwan, the one who put on this damn collar. Sounds like she needs help. That's the Magisters that were there. All been splattered. She tries to speak, but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. Look around for some way to help her. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth soaked with some kind of strong smelling tincture. Take the cloth and hold it tight to the wound to try and stem the bleeding. Quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister C One's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. Hold the cloth hold it tighter. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. C One clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Continue holding the cloth to the wound. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. Gods. Oh, octopus is inside. Oh, hello. It's ripping the ship apart. The sit <laughs> Some wonderful artwork in this game. I have plans for you, child. Rise. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are now presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. Yeah, I enjoyed that opener, actually. This is interesting how quickly this bar scoots up. <laughs> it's nothing like that on the old consoles. Jesus. I've danced with death before, but that was a particularly intimate waltz. I suppose I'm the lone survivor. <sighs> how jolly. Well, it is really smooth. It is a 30, I think, but it's really, really nice. And there's no hint of a screen tear going on there. That's gorgeous. Very, very solid people. Absolutely beautiful, that. Yeah, I really enjoyed that opener. I mean, my God, that's been an hour and 40 minutes, people. I try and keep these to an hour normally, but I thought there's so much slow stuff in there. I wanted to get the big action in at the end and a couple of fights. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that opener. If you take your time with that beginning bit and don't rush it, it's it's really interesting stuff. The character creation in itself is really interesting. Picking out the skills and the you know all that sort of stuff that you're going to do and developing your character, listening to their backstories. And even, you know... Just take your time around the ship, because I rushed that the last time. I didn't get any of this stuff the last I don't even remember leaving with a bow the last time, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, there you are. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in Divinity Original Sin 2 on the Xbox Series X. And I shall catch you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.